A national tribute is underway right now here in Paris for Hubert Germain. He was the last of an elite group of French resistance fighters during World War II. You can see the French president there, Emmanuel Macron. He is reviewing the troops at Les, uh, the Invalides, there where he will soon eulogize Mr. Germain. And joining us now to talk more about this is Dr. David Lees. He's an associate professor of French at the University of Warwick. Thanks so much uh, for being with us. As we watch what's happening here, can you tell us a little bit more about Hubert Germain and his role in French history? Of course, so Hubert Germain was one of these uh, groups, one of this, one of this group of amazing people who went across with Charles de Gaulle, uh, the, who then became the leader of the French resistance uh, during the Second World War. Uh, Hubert Germain, like, like Charles de Gaulle, was a very brave individual making a brave decision at a very difficult time to go across to the UK uh, at a time when, uh, when, when France was invaded by the Nazis, uh, when, of course, uh, Marshal Philippe Pétain became the leader of the, the Vichy regime, the government that collaborated with the Nazis during the Second World War. Um, Monsieur Germain um, made a decision to go across to the UK and, and met Charles de Gaulle, uh, and he was one of this elite group of, of soldiers who, who took part in a number of campaigns uh, during the Second World War, fighting alongside British forces at El Alamein in, in Egypt, and then becoming part of the liberating force uh, that liberated France from the south, uh, from Provence, helping to liberate the port city of Toulon, uh, and then making his way gradually along with uh, other members of, of the French free forces, uh, up through to Alsace-Lorraine, where uh, he managed to, uh, to defeat the Germans and push the Germans back into, into Germany. Uh, and then eventually uh, end up, ended up finishing the war just outside of Germany uh, as the surrender was signed. So Mr. Germain really was a, a very uh, important figure, one of the last, of the last, as I say, of this group of, uh, of companions of the liberation, this group of men and women who were around Charles de Gaulle uh, at that time. And he made a very brave and remarkable decision to, as I say, to leave France, uh, to leave comparative comfort and to make a difficult decision to go across uh, to the UK, uh, one of the few people who did so. Uh, to join De Gaulle at that very difficult time. Okay, um, Dr. David Lees, can you just stand by there because we want to talk a little bit more, but let's listen in. You can see there the uh, coffin carrying the body of Hubert Germain coming in to the Invalide. Let's listen in. Dr. David Lees is back with us, Associate Professor of, of French at the University of Warwick. Um, for our viewers who are just joining us, you can see here this is a ceremony happening at the Invalide, uh, the coffin carrying Hubert Germain there. He was the last of an elite group of French resistance fighters during World War II. Uh, Dr. Lees, uh, you know, he, Hubert Germain said that he would never forget his first meeting with de Gaulle. Um, and the quote that I have here is he said he stopped for a second, looked at me and said, I'm going to need you. So he was handpicked by, by Charles de Gaulle, wasn't he? He was effectively handpicked. And, and it's a remarkable uh, quotation, as you say. Uh, it seems to have been you know, very widely uh, publicized in the aftermath of Monsieur Germain's death. You know, it's, it's been widely reported. Very clearly, de Gaulle picked out Monsieur Germain as being somebody who could play a major role in terms of liberation. You know, as I say, at a time when France itself seemed to be lost, really, the cause was lost. You know, Pétain was installed as the leader of the Vichy regime. It, it looked as though France will now collaborate with the Nazis. There's very little in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, support for the idea of resisting either the Nazis or the Vichy regime. And yet Monsieur Germain, alongside many, many other people, say, like, like Charles de Gaulle, 
uh, made that brave decision to, to go across to the UK and to, and to take up the fight. And it was a very long and difficult fight, we have to say, of course, a series of, of botched landings, uh, including the, the failed uh, attempts to land at Dakar in Senegal, um, a, a fight which took uh, Monsieur Germain and others around the world, but which eventually led them to help to liberate France in 1944. And of course, like, like Charles de Gaulle himself, Monsieur Germain is now being hailed rightly as a hero at a time when other people back people like Philippe Pétain and back the Vichy regime. Those people who backed that regime, of course, were treated as villains, whereas Monsieur Germain and Charles de Gaulle uh, have gone down in history as heroes. You know, uh, Hubert Germain lived to be 101 years old. As you watch this, you must think that this is sort of closing closing the page on, on a history, uh, on a page in French history. Absolutely right, of course. I mean, people who were adults during the, the occupation of France and during the Second World War, many of them have, have since died. Of course, people who may, may have been children are, are reaching their, you know, their, their, their 80s and 90s, they're getting more frail. It really is the end of an era. Uh, and all, all the sadder for it, but it's 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 brilliant, really, that uh, Emmanuel Macron is, is is celebrating the life of Hubert Germain in this way, and that of course he's been treated to this wonderful event today. Can you say anything about his character? What kind of person was he? So from the from the reports that have been widely circulated, and from the research uh, that I've done myself, it seems very clear. He was a warm and engaging individual, but also somebody who, who, who was very much on the centre right of French politics, who stood as uh, as a mayor of his local town on the Gaullist ticket in favour of Charles de Gaulle and his party. Uh, and of course, um, subsequently stood as a, as a deputy, as a member of parliament for uh, the French parliament, again on the centre right, uh, becoming a minister of telecommunications. So somebody who had uh, a, a decent political career as well as a, a very famous and celebrated military career during the Second World War. And we're seeing these live pictures of the ceremony. You can see President Emmanuel Macron there. He will be eulogizing Hubert Germain um, not long from now. Let's just take a listen in uh, on the ceremony. And you can see there French President Emmanuel Macron walking across and should be uh, walking up to the podium to deliver a eulogy for Hubert Germain in just a few moments. Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Mr. Prime Minister. Monsieur le Président du Sénat. Mr. President of Senate. Mesdames et Messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen, ministers. Madame et messieurs les premiers ministres. Ladies and gentlemen, prime ministers. Madame l'ambassadrice. Mrs. Ambassador. Mesdames et messieurs les parlementaires. Ladies and gentlemen, MPs. Mr. the Grand Chancelier of the Legion of Honor. Mr. the National Delegate. Ladies and gentlemen, the members of the Council of the Order of Liberation. Monsieur le chef d'état-major des armées. Mr. the Head Chief of Staff of the Army. Officers, under-officers, Marine, Army, Navy, Air Force, ladies and gentlemen, in your various positions, ladies and gentlemen. 
The life of Hubert Germain is an anthology of commitment and courage. With the 1037 comrades of the Compagnon de la Libération who put back France from the abyss, he was a member of the uh, Brotherhood, a phalange of the ideal. Morning and evening, he was the last to lay down the arms, resistant and ultimate hero of the circle of heroes of combatants now disappeared. Uprooted by a father general in China in, in, in the China and in Syria, Hubert Germain loved to get back to his land in the Rome area and spent his years looking for France everywhere, in the books, in his dreams. Teenager, uh, he was indisciplined in everything. He knew only one loyalty, the motherland and the fatherland. Everything starts at the spring 1940, when Pétain signed the armistice. He goes to undergo a competition for the naval army. While he is writing, he suddenly found out that to succeed in this contest would mean to serve under the Nazi army. He stops, leaves a blank copy, leaves and says, I'm going to war. Even German courage meets others, because if he leaves his friends, his relatives, he finds in England other friends, another family, who answered like him to the appeal of uh, General de Gaulle. In London, there are a few hundreds, a guild of honor, ready for everything for a cause that is beyond them. Free France. Peasants, craftsmen, teachers, soldiers, they become comrades for life. They are all now companions for the eternity. To the summer of London succeeds the spring in the Middle East. He is really eager to combat. He's sent to the Syrian front. And summer 42, it's in Libya that he's covered with glory. De Gaulle asks his soldiers to stop the German army in Birakim. France is looking at you. You are its pride, he says. Heat is scorching. Wind is full of sand. Hubert Germain and his companion of the second half brigade of the Foreign Legion stop the foreign army. One against ten. No matter. For 16 days, he resists to all the assaults from air and land against them. Miracle of the will, prodigy of patriotism, evenings, because in the evening, June 11 to 12, 1942, this lock is breaking the uh, army, the foreign army, and Hubert Germain is at the head, leading the French forces. He is a torch in the darkness. His determination is more burning than all the uh, lights in the sky. The odyssey of free France isn't stopping there, leading him to the uh, pyramids of Egypt, to Tunisia, to Italy. He sees, dying under his very eyes, comrades in arms who never left his mind. He is wounded near Monte Cassino, but goes on, in spite of all, always. To be decorated by General de Gaulle, the cross making him companion in the order of the liberation, the honor and the mission of a life. Hubert Germain knows that he has to be uh, proud of it.
up to it. Then comes the day to be back in his country. August 15, 1944, Hubert Germain lands on the uh, shores of Provence. His first thing is to kneel to take a little bit of the earth of France in his hands. Feel it, touch it. Return, carnal return, after four years of combat and exile. He is freeing Alsace, Berlin, before getting the end of the war. A few years after leaving the military operations, Hubert Germain will go into the political arena, become a mayor of saint chiron small village of his son, Loyal to de Gaulle, close to Mesmer, he bears their ideas, his, and to the National Assembly first, in the ranks of the government, then Minister of the Post Office, Telegraph and Telephone, then in charge of the relations with the Parliament under the presidency of Georges Pompidou. With his comrade in arms, he defended freedom with his brother in Saul, all those who recognize as such, he will then rebuild the fraternity of brotherhood, looking endlessly in the life of resistance and hope. His last years, Hubert Germain became the warden of the flame lit by General de Gaulle. Last recognition of his comrades in arms, he was caporal chef of the Foreign Legion a few weeks ago. Last chancellor of honor of the Order of Liberation, he blew on the uh, last flames until his last uh, breathe. They will not stop with him. They will not. Hubert Germain will rest in the crypt of the Mount Valérien, closing then the history of the 1,038 companions. We had philosophical convictions, political and religious, that were different or even opposed. But we knew how to gather for the sacred cause of the liberty of our fatherland. This is what he said. So then, yes. The order of liberation will survive him, independent and loyal to its history. I am really swearing it here. My lieutenant, this last month, you fought your last battle. Your courage, your dignity facing war were a lesson for many of us. Humbleness, doubts went along with you. You became every day a little bit more the embodiment of all your companions, vibrating with this first flame the love of France and the service to the fatherland. Then, on this day, the millenary silence, silence of the French spirit are with you. This chivalry coming from the dark ages, from Reims, Accor, the Chemin des Dames, Koufra, Orléans, Birakim, that are alongside and telling you this irresistible resolution of France. Never give up of the freedom of the fatherland at its soul. You joined them, my lieutenant. And our task will be to carry on with the same ardor this struggle. We will do it. Long live the Republic. Long live France.
We were just listening there to French President Emmanuel Macron. He was delivering a eulogy for Hubert Germain, who died this week at the age of 101. He was the last of an elite group of French resistance fighters during World War II. In his speech, Macron looked back on Hubert Germain's life and said he knew only the loyalty to the motherland and fatherland. We still have with us Dr. David Lees, Associate Professor of French at the University of, of Warwick. Dr. Lees, what did you make of what Macron had to say? Moving speech, and I'm sure many of your viewers would have found the same. It was a really quite a heartfelt speech. Uh, as you say, pay tribute to Monsieur Germain's wide, uh, wide-ranging career from his time uh, working with de Gaulle and, and fighting alongside de Gaulle, plotted the whole history of his life in terms of uh, the Second World War, uh, through to the liberation and through to the defeat of the Nazis, uh, right up to the present day. I thought it was very, very moving. And, and I think what was most remarkable really was the lack of kind of political content, really. There was no sense that this was somebody who may have represented a different viewpoint from Emmanuel Macron's own viewpoint. It was very heartfelt, very patriotic. Uh, I think one thing that Macron does very well is, is this kind of commemoration, which was, as I say, very heartfelt, appear very genuine, really did trace Hubert Germain's life in, in a very meaningful way. Uh, and I think particularly pay tribute to the role he played in terms of the kind of moral support for de Gaulle and for the other leaders of the Free French Forces, really kind of describing uh, Monsieur Germain at the end of his life as being the embodiment of all that kind of came with de Gaulle, the spirit of resistance, the flame of resistance, as de Gaulle famously uh, claimed in, in, in June 1940. So really quite a moving and, and heartfelt speech, uh, which you know will have done Emmanuel Macron himself no harm, but which, of course, paid tribute to very movingly to, um, to Monsieur Germain's life. Well, President Macron shared shared a story during his comments about Mr. Germain coming coming back to France after four years, falling to his knees, crying on the beach. Can you talk a little bit about the significance of, of that particular story? It's something which many uh, people who fought in the French resistance and who uh, came back to France during the uh, French liberations, it's something that very many of those figures also went through. So it's, it's a kind of sign of, of returning to to the, to the nation, to the in, in Macron's in the translation of Macron's speech, the fatherland, but the kind of country, um, and, and it's something which you know very many uh, people did, whether it's on the beaches of Normandy in, in June 1944 or later in August 1944 on the beaches of Provence. But that had a kind of real, um, you know, real meaning and a, and a symbolism, of course, the idea of returning back to French soil, liberated French soil, as opposed to what might have been perceived as being somewhat uh, sort of tarnished uh, French soil under Philippe Pétain, under the Vichy regime. By, by, the, by the time of, of the liberation in 1944, uh, the entire French nation was occupied by the Nazis. So the Nazis were present in the south of France as well as in the north. So for someone like Hubert Germain, this would have been a sign of reclaiming French soil from the Nazis and from the Vichy forces. Okay, we want to thank you, Dr. David Lees, Associate Professor of French at the University of Warwick, for your insight on this important day in French history, Hubert Germain being laid to rest, the last of the elite group of French resistance fighters during World War II. Well, that's it for now. Stay tuned for more world news here on France 24.